over time to be this fluent English speaker. Well, like, when did he show up in Dayton? Uh, I don't have a date. I, I, Do you have a sense Dayton, even? Dayton. I, I have a sense that he had been there for at least 20 years. Okay. Because, I, I mean, you know, four years isn't very long time, but 20 years, you yeah. know, if after he got out of the military, he had gone someplace, became well, more and more fluent. I would say four years of immersion, of immersion learning of any language, you'd speak it a hell of a lot better at the end of the four years. Totally, than you but you still might not speak it well. well. But, uh, but that's the thing, is that if, if four after years. four years, he's still saying, I do 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 Well, maybe he had a speech impediment, too, who knows? Okay, I don't think it was a speech impediment, because if you read the things where he's making up these these crazy sentences, it just sounds like that he just didn't get to the new language at all. Yeah. And so that I actually have a huge problem with if what Alcott is saying is right, mm. I really, it's, it, to me, it's a huge nail against Frank Finkel from Dayton, Washington, because that's just such a, even with 40 years, it just seems like so... I have a hard time lining the two up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I could sit here and talk about it all day, but we should just move on, I guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you guys like that issue. I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do a special I, I, bonus episode. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's see. Let's see. The other things uh, against Frank Finkel being there is the fact that he did not attend the, uh, the reunion, which specifically had a man named Charles Windolph in attendance. Windolph said that he knew the Finkel that was at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Yeah, he was mentioned before. He yeah, mentioned before, and, but, and yeah. so our Frank Finkel didn't go to this event with him as if he was avoiding meeting the man or, that he knew he didn't know. How or long? he never heard of the, the reunion. Yeah, he, when was that, though? Yeah. I don't have a clear was sense Was it after, the like, 1920 when he came out with the yes, story? Yes, it okay. was after he oh, came okay. forward, but I don't have a clear sense of the date. Like, you know, was it two months after he came out or was it eight uh, years after? I don't have a clear sense of date because unfortunately the reading always says and he declined to attend this event and it never says yeah, maybe I can't was find sick. the date on but it. But you know where the event was? Yeah. Because that's the other thing. It's like the guy lives clear on the west coast. You mm -hmm. know I mean? I, yeah. can't, I can't find like yeah. what I just described is exactly totally. how it always is listed yeah. so I, mean, I have no that's, idea. That's why it's annoying, right? It's like maybe it's right when his wife was dying. Yeah. yeah. You know? Or well, he maybe. said, be a oh, I could, see, I could see this Windolf guy or I could stay with my dying Delia. Yeah. Or maybe everything was just tonky dory but it was harvest season or maybe it, he just didn't feel like traveling 2,000 so miles maybe in like 1920. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe he's like in retrospect, he's like, that was a guy that was a total jerk. Uh, and he told me to go with Custer. I lost rock, paper, scissors to him to yeah, go with Custer. I know, I know. There's that too. But yeah, I just think, you know, people forget travel back in those days was a lot harder than it is today. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Let's see. What are, uh, oh, I've got, I've got two last bullet points in here. They're not actually bullet points. I know Devin got really excited when I said that, but there's last two points here about the he is actually not telling the truth theory, which is if you remember, I said that Hermie Finkel, his second wife, said that, oh, well, he enlisted under this name Frank Hall, mm -hmm. which is completely different than everything that we've talked about so far before. Well, there's a huge issue with that. And she was really, really big on pushing that theory. But the problem, of course, is that there was a Frank Hall. I'm sure there were many Frank Halls. There was a well-known Frank Hall. There's an obvious Frank Hall in the time frame, in the 7th Cavalry. The problem is, is that that Frank Hall was five and a half feet tall. He was 14 years older than our Frank Finkel. And oh, by the way, he deserted the 7th a year before the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Yeah. So he's like he's completely not in the storyline or the story arc. So I think that's I mean if Delia had or not Delia, but if Hermie had said, "Oh, well, he must have been under August." Mm -hmm. Maybe she'd have had something to go on, but she really she honed in on this one this Frank Hall idea, and that seems to be what screwed her up, and that also seems to kind of torpedo 
the whole Frank Finkel story because everybody says, well, she must have gotten that from him. Like, he must have said, oh, this is what I really did. It's just so weird, though, because it sounds like the story is when he was telling it, he was August Finkel. Mm -hmm. And there was that Sergeant August Finkel that, like, for all they knew, totally could have been him. It's just so weird that she would just continue to push that he was Frank Hall. Yeah, I... I don't. I don't know. I. I, I can't speak for her. Of I can't not. say what the heck w- was going through her mind when yeah. she started going. I mean, maybe she, maybe he was a doddering old fool, and she didn't really pay him that much attention until after he died, and she went, "Oh hell, I really should have listened to what he said." Or maybe because I want the money now. Or maybe he knew that she had kind of only married him for his money and was like. Ah, oh, screw you. Yeah. It's good yeah it, um, that would be the best way to get a gold digger back. Oh, for yeah. sure it would. But the fact that there's so much confusion surrounding his history, you know, doesn't totally shoot the whole thing down. I agree with that. When it comes to the Battle of the Little Bighorn and Custer's Last Stand, nobody seems to agree on anything. Yeah. And I Oh, mean, that's, that's absolutely true. The battle true. and everything. I mean, uh, nobody knows exactly what happened to Custer's Last Stand. I mean, uh, you know, so the popular conception is they, 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 you know, had their last stand on a hilltop, but nobody's really even totally sure about that. There's some archaeological evidence that, you know, from the disposition of the bodies, etc., that says, maybe not, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, and um, there's, 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 ev- there's arguments that actually Custer was shot and killed in the river and his men drug his body to where it was found. I mean, this yeah. is, and this is going deep into the weeds about the Custer conspiracy, which is a completely different story. Absolutely different. But yeah. it's, the, the whole thing is just so, it's, 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 I equate it to somebody drawing the Mona Lisa on an Etch-a-Sketch and then shaking the crap out of it and saying, put it back together. Yeah. That's, uh, There's no way. Yeah, so we'll never really know. No. Until, no. We, until we invent a way back machine and we can send people back to, to be there and hope they don't get killed. That's why hey, I'm Devin, not going to Hey, Devin, you don't have anything going on. Build us a way back machine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's one other thing that I want to talk about that is uh, a knock against... Uh, Frank and his story, and that is his last name, and the fact that his last name is spelled a bajillion different ways, and not by the internet, mind you, but by him mm. over the years. Yeah. So he spells his name in different documentation over the years, F I N K L E. He then starts spelling it F I N K E L. And then later on, F-I-N-C-K-E-L. So his spelling of his name, Finkel to Finkel to Funkel, like it goes all over the map, and that that doesn't that doesn't make it feel like he knew what his own name was it over suggest- time. Like why would it why would it morph that one? It would suggest to me that yeah, it was it was an alias from the get go. I mean mm-hmm. like, you know, he adopted it later much later in life. It was never his it was not his birth name. Yeah. And so but, if he has a couple yeah. of beers, uh, you know, I forget how to spell my name after well, a couple yeah. of beers sometimes. I only, yeah, I can only spell my name because, you know, I've been having it pounded into my head since I was, you know, three years old or something. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess yeah. the the argument could be made that if he really, well, if the story of being an immigrant child is true, you know, this, ha- again, this happened to my family when they came over, they changed their name on Ellis Island. But, you know, if you came over when you were six or seven, you'd been used to spelling your name one way. Suddenly your name's spelled a different way. Mm-hmm. goes back and forth all the time, you know. Or you decide, like, you know what? Oh, we're just going to start spelling it that old way again. You know, I want to go back to my roots. That's fine. And then you realize that was dumb. What You know, there are just a lot of little things that can happen. I'm not saying they did happen or they didn't happen. But I'm at least willing to say that there's some flexibility. And and remember, today we sign our names a hell of a lot more oh, yeah. than uh, people did back then. Writing was a luxury. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, yeah, there could have also been some literacy things. Going yes, on there. I mean, yeah. you you didn't write your name every day. If you use a credit card or go to some place where they print out a receipt and you have to, sign, I probably sign my name a half dozen times a week without even thinking about it. Yeah. And 
if you go back in history a hundred years ago, you signed your name maybe a half dozen times a year. I have a friend whose signature is an intentional misspelling of their name yeah. in order to be able to say, like, I spell my name this way when I sign it. So if somebody were to fake the signature, they would be able to say, well, it's spelled correctly and I don't spell my name correctly. That's a good idea. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, it could be something as crazy as that. I Probably not, but I totally... It's... Listen, I'm lucky I haven't gotten in trouble with the U.S. government because I, I write out my middle name mm -hmm. so infrequently that <laughs> I actually Sorry. invert the letters in my... I think See? we've talked about this. Maybe it's that. I invert the letters in my middle name he and my that. wife is like, wait, how did you spell that? You know that's not how it's spelled. It oh, is really? now. Well, it turns out I've been doing it wrong for this long, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to just run with it. Totally. So, okay. You guys got any, uh, any, uh, which, which theory, which theory or which things uh, in the theories do you uh, like? I know uh, people enjoy that. So I want to know what you guys think. Well, I'm going to go with, he was, he was there. Okay. Somebody, somebody had to survive that, right? I'm, a, I'm agreeing. He yeah, was there. He was there. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm inclined to say that he was not there. Mm -hmm. I really, I, it, if the story of why he came forward is what it is, I think it's bogus. And I really feel like he might have been a... We've encountered these people. He's a connoisseur of a certain story. Yeah. And he got ahead of himself. And then once fame hit him, he couldn't retract it. Yeah. So I, I actually think that he probably wasn't there. Mm, I think mm. he was. Okay. Well, wow. you, our dear listeners, are welcome to share your opinions on this with us. And of course... If you were there, we want to hear from you especially. Yeah. Really, yeah. I do, because yeah. holy hell, how old are you? Yeah. Uh, but you are welcome to share your opinions with us. There's a multitude of ways to do that. You could do it on social media, because we have the Facebook page and the Facebook group. Uh, if you want to do that, on the and do it in the group. you got to join the group. And to join the group, you got to answer the questions. They're very simple. I'm not actually going to provide you the, the answers, because you already know them. They're that easy. You could get a hold of us on Twitter where we are thinking sideways. You can tweet your answer in a very short, sporadic way, or you could just go to Twitter and look at the really funny stuff that we put up, a.k.a. Devin puts up. Yeah. We're also on Instagram. Don't send us... But Devin also puts up funny stuff on Instagram. All Hilarious things. So funny. So good. If you want to actually write words to us in the few, fewer than 200 and some odd characters, you can do so through an email. You can send us an email at thinking sideways podcast at gmail.com where you can send us your thoughts on the story thoughts on any story uh, story suggestions opinions about the show general feedback nothing negative because we don't like the negative but we love the positive send us whatever you want I don't really just care. be nice to us we're yeah, real humans just generally we're right. people we're negative humans. is okay actually yeah. we need feedback you know, we're we'll humans take it. so yeah. send us whatever you want at that email address by the way if you want to read some of the research for this particular story that will be on our website and that is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com we'll have links for this story as well as all past stories uh, you can listen to the story there you can download it there by the way there's an episode list on the website you can see chronologically all stories that we've done you can also find links to merch yes because on the website we have both Zazzle and Redbubble links to them so you can find the shirts and the mugs and the t-shirts and uh, uh, hoodies night lights night lights oh yeah God, I can't right. we still have about the stickers yeah. we have all god how long ago did we make that stuff? long time a long time ago yeah. people are Elvis still buying it because yeah. it's awesome yeah. Um, uh, by the way, I talked about streaming and downloading off of the website. You can also do that anywhere that you get podcasts. So if you use Apple Podcasts, you can do it there. If you use Stitcher, you can do it there. Google Play, you can do it there. If you're on a site that allows you to leave a comment and a review, please do so because that helps other folks find us. Uh, of course, you know, subscribe while you're there. If you're on Stitcher, or well, actually, if you're not on Stitcher, just so you know, we're going to let you in on a little deal. We're on Stitcher Premium. If you're a Stitcher Premium member, you'll get the episodes four days early. You'll get the episodes ad-free. 
And by the way, we put out monthly bonus content. So these things are all available to premium members. If you're not a premium member and you want to become one, you can go to stitcher.com slash thinking sideways, use the promo code sideways, and you'll get one month free, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, by the way, that month free, that requires that you sign up for the 12-month plan. If you do the monthly plan, well, I'm afraid it doesn't take effect. Damn. So, just so you know how that works, uh, that's really all that we've got. So, I think that we need to build a, a little defensive fort out of cats because no, there's cats no, in this no, house. No dead animals. No, no, no. no. I, listen, they're cats. They love to just lay in kind of a pile because that's what cats do. So, we're going to hide behind those cats. Uh-huh. It's cat fort. Okay. You're not playing along, dude. Dude, they're my cats. You can't shoot at my cats. I just told you we're not going to shoot at your cats. <laughs> the, they're just the other cats. Side, they like to pile up. The other side's going to shoot at them. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's cat pile. Okay, yeah. Devin, you got anything to share? I'm going to go hide in a horse. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to go hide behind a car door. That always stops bullets. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Han Solo. Thank you, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And we will talk to you people next week. To Lou, folks. It was, it was Luke, not Han. This episode of Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by Cape Wearing Armadillos. Instead, it's brought to you by Stitcher Premium. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Thinking Sideways is on Stitcher Premium, so if you're tired of waiting for Thursdays and you want to make Sunday slash Monday your day for the mystery, well, you can get a hold of us on Stitcher Premium. You get the episodes early, like I said. There's no ads in the episode. And by the way, there's some extra bonus content thrown out once a month. Joe is silently throwing his arms in the air and screaming, yay, he is pulling his hair out. Joe, you need to stop. That looks like it's painful. If you go to stitcher.com slash thinking sideways and you use the promo code sideways, you'll get one month free when you sign up for the 12 month plan. So go there. Good deal to be had. It's a great time. This episode is also brought to you by the audiobook edition of The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Here the story listeners are calling Wow, just W O W, and one of the best audiobooks ever, E V E R. Narrated by Julia Whalen, this twisty psychological suspense about a jealous wife is not what you think. I know we all know jealous wives, this one's not it. Start listening now at MacmillanAudio.com slash Wife Between Us. That's Macmillan, M-A-C-M-I-L-L-A-N, Audio.com slash Wife Between Us. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Thinking Sideways, the podcast. I'm Devin, joined as always by Joe and Steve. Today we're going to talk about a mystery. Woo! Yeah. The disappearance. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Then, huh? uh, it was suggested by everyone. Yeah, this is a popular one. Yeah, uh, very including one. Uh, Sarah, Jean, Julian, and Stephanie. They were yeah. the first four. And some others. Yeah, yeah. lots of others. Um, and if you don't check the names of the episodes before you start listening to them, now I get to tell you, we are going to talk about the disappearance of Brian Schaefer today. Who? Brian Schaefer? Who's that? He's a guy who disappeared weirdly. Oh, really? Like out of a bar or something? This, I know, is a pet case for a lot of people in general. So here's my typical, we're probably going to leave some of your favorite details out. Because there's a lot of rabbit holes. uh, Disclaimer, exactly. But uh, we don't really need a little ears disclaimer. No. Which is great. This, This is a weird case. Yeah, it's just, it's really weird. I would um, say... Endless speculation, I have to say, too, on the internet about Oh, it. yeah, tons yeah. of it. It's kind of, I would say it's akin almost to the Mara Murray case. And yeah. that realistically, as far as, as far as confirmed details that we absolutely positively know, 
There's not that much there. About four pages of details and about 70 million pages of conjecture. Yeah, exactly. I don't think even four pages of details. I think, <laughs> yeah. that, I think one well, page I'm, of details. I was including the videotapes, frames. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, frame by frame. Yeah. yeah. But basically the overview of this case is a guy walks into a bar and disappears forever. Huh. That is the worst joke ever. Uh, yeah. No that punchline. Joke? It's that bad. Guy walks into a bar, bartender says, what is this, a joke? Ha. Ah. Uh, get it. Okay. okay. So let's start at the top. Okay. <laughs> Brian Schaefer was 27 when he disappeared, and he was a medical student at the University of Ohio. It was his second year, uh, and he had two more years until he would become a doctor, so he was halfway through. No, no, two more years until he starts the suffering process of being a resident and everything else. Well, then okay. He to be a doctor. Technically, yeah. yeah. True. But I two more years. All kinds of hoops before you get to be a doctor. Two more years of medical school. Yeah. Yeah. He had been in school the entire time. He did the high school, the undergrad in microbiology, and then on to the grad program he was in. So he, he wasn't point, one of those guys who took a break at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Is what yeah. You're at, yeah. And it took him a little longer to do his undergrad than four years. That was but, like six years or something. Which is okay. Yeah, Especially know. something like microbiology. <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's yeah. not easy. As long as it didn't stop him from getting into med school, then yeah. Yeah, no biggie. Yeah. yeah. By all accounts, he was a very smart, very nice guy. He was apparently a talented musician as well, often maybe joking, but kind of seriously not joking. You know the joke yeah. where people, you know, reveal their deepest, darkest wishes by quote unquote joking around I about it. I want to be a famous podcaster. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That dream does not work out well. It does not. Anyway, his, his go-to joke was that the doctor thing was just until his musical career took off. Well, smart to actually plan a second career just in case that didn't happen. It's very true. Yeah. Because he, he wanted to be Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. yeah. And he there's did. already one Jimmy Buffett. He would have yeah. to murder the other Jimmy Buffett. Well, and he was really into Pearl Jam. Well, you want to yeah. actually, actually hear a funny, weird bit of uh, factoid about Jimmy Buffett? Okay. Yeah, what's that? Okay, so you know there's the whole Margaritaville lifestyle yeah. that Jimmy Buffett has been selling for years? He's not yeah. that way at all. He doesn't live that lifestyle. Yeah. It was He's from awful. the very beginning, yeah. he said, I'm going to sell people this lifestyle, and they have been paying mm-hmm. him for it for decades. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But yeah, what, how does he actually live? Is he like a non-drinking guy who yeah. lives, lives in New Jersey he's or just something your, like that? Yeah, he's your normal run about guy who doesn't drink much he's not into the the beach lifestyle he's yeah. like no I, I sing music and people buy my stuff and I live well off of it yeah uh-huh. no yeah. it makes sense uh, yeah. smart the guy is a smart businessman yeah. yeah yeah so Brian Schaefer oh yeah back to our back topic, to here. topic yeah. yes like I said he was also into Pearl Jam he had a Pearl Jam tattoo on him Mm-hmm. I right. yeah, yeah. Sure that. The yeah. Stick man. Like the stick man or whatever, yeah. Giving the peace sign or something like that, or a big hug or something. He had a good relationship with his family, which was his mother Renee, his father Randy, and his younger brother Derek. Unfortunately, Renee lost a long battle with a particularly bad type of cancer called... It's it's bone cancer. It's, it's way yeah. easier to say bone it's, cancer. It's bone marrow cancer. Yeah, it's, it's not myelo, even myelodysplastic syndrome. Yeah, so it's, it's a kind of something that's kind of similar to uh, what should we call it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had the word yeah. balancing on the tip of my fulcrum of my brain. Yeah, yeah now, but it's mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's like a bone marrow thing. It is. It, yeah, it, so it, basically, it inhibits the like the, the, the formation of. Blood cells. Of, of red blood cells, red, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so it was a long, kind of painful battle for her. She she did unfortunately lose that battle in March of 2006. Her passing was hard on the whole family, and but those close to Brian said that he was taking it. He at least outwardly was taking it really well, but they suspected that he was not taking it as well as I know. it seemed like yeah, he was taking it. Yeah, it's understandable. Yeah, you know, I, I got to tell you that I haven't been through a couple of those long lingering illness things myself with yep. my parents. Yep. That by the time it's all over, um, you know, you've actually done a lot of your, all the grief is really kind of behind you already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you're kind of just ready to start living your life again. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But also, you know, missing your parents. No, it mm-hmm. still yeah. sucks, but I yeah, mean, it's still, definitely. it's not a, it's not a real shock to the system like if they suddenly get killed in a wreck or yeah, something Yeah, it's, right. it's not unexpected. Not yeah, at all. Yeah, and you've had your time to say goodbye and all that stuff. Oh, so. yeah. At Ohio State University... In 2006, spring break started on March 31st, a Friday that year. Every year, usually spring break starts on a Friday. Except uh, for that one year where it was really lame and it started on Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know, that'd be kind of The worst spring nice. break ever. 
I feel like that'd be kind of nice. <laughs> but it'd have to go all the way to the next Friday. It'd be lame if it was literally... No, no, no. Just two days. It was still a yeah. week, oh, but it went from Wednesday to Tuesday. Oh, got it. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Back to our case. Um, it started on Friday, the March 31st, which of 2006. Which is April Fool's Eve. Which is April Fool's Eve, but also the same month that Renee, Brian's mom, had passed away. Right. We don't. I don't have a date necessarily for that I was I, well, I don't know it was three weeks before the yeah it was, it was in the first week of the yeah. month is since yeah. she passed right but I don't have like a exact specific hard date, yeah. date which is fine I think but recently Brian had planned to go to Florida Miami specifically with his girlfriend Alexis for the bulk of spring break where he was reportedly planning to propose to her are we going to talk about that part later on I assume what, Florida? No, the the whole propose, plan to propose bit. Um, what about it? Well, so I see this everywhere, and it really sticks in my craw because she's the one who seems to say it. This stuff? Like, I've no. never heard I don't, that. It, I don't believe his, it was. His no. brother's the one who brought it up first. Okay, but was a ring ever found mm. among his possessions I, is what I want to know. I have heard not, that he did, had not bought a ring. Which makes that me doesn't, think... I mean, I'll I'll just say, yes, okay, traditionally he would have a ring and blah, 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 but I, I'm I mean, not yes, bothered go by to that. the bubblegum machine and get the plastic toy ring, but or it just no seems ring that if at you're all. planning ahead, it should have been somewhere. Maybe, um, I yeah. Maybe I he just, was a last-minute kind of guy. But or but, maybe yeah. he was going to do it without a ring, which is also fine, because uh, from what I have heard or talked to a number of people I know, they say, I don't want to buy a ring because I know she's going to want to help pick it out. No, it's good so point. he says, okay, we'll go pick out a ring. I'm going to buy it for you. You'll have the perfect ring, and I don't trust myself, blah, 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 whatever. Or you get the placeholder. Yeah, or, you know, just know your fiancé well enough. Or to maybe buy. had it all planned out to wander into a jewelry store in Florida and then just, like, say, oh, you like that ring? Okay, I'll buy it. And then yeah. you get on your knees and say, oh, you made me. And then she says no. Yeah. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, then you say, great, I can return this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or you, do you don't it. even you, buy it yet. Yeah. That's, and you that's do it before you buy the it. The ideal, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, but then that makes the rest of the vacation a little bit uncomfortable, of course. But at least you saved a lot of bucks by not buying the jewelry. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I regardless of joke. the ring... Um, oh, yeah, sorry. We, we t- that's okay. I, I yeah. hear what you're saying, um, but the first time I saw it said was from his brother. And it's my understanding that he had talked a little bit about it when he was out to dinner with his father on the okay. 31st as well. Okay. But, yes, I agree. And also, it was a little weird to me because they'd only been together for a year. Yeah, but, you know, 27... That part doesn't bother me. It's the lack yeah. of the ring. And that bothers you? Okay, sure. Yeah, the, yeah. The no evidence of the in- the actual intention to make it happen. Not, not the one, bugs me. Well, not the one bothers me at all. I guess, okay. yeah, yeah, I was going to say, either way, it doesn't really matter because they'd planned to go to Miami for a week together. Okay. They were in a serious, committed relationship to each other. That's really all I guess we really need to know about it. Anyhow, Brian's father, Randy, came into town to visit and celebrate spring break with Brian. Is always how you will see it reported, that they were there to celebrate spring break. I really think Randy was just thinking, you know what, my wife just died. Um, I really care about my son, and I you know, care about both of my children, Mm -hmm. and I just, you know, I want to see him. And this is a great excuse. And maybe yeah. he wanted to see how he was doing. Yeah. You know? See how he's doing, spend some quality time with him, knowing he was going to leave for a whole week, yeah. you know, just a couple weeks after his wife and, and Brian's mom had passed away. You know, yeah, just it's, kind it's of... a check. Yeah, I think it's a check. check. It's a check and also just a, you know, nice time mm-hmm. to see him. So they went out to dinner that night, uh, or that evening, I guess, to a steakhouse. It's not really clear what time it was, but I do think it was like evening time like Mm -hmm. you know five six o'clock at night randy said that it seemed like brian was tired Uh, yeah finals will do that to you yeah it sounded like he had been pulling a lot of all-nighters for exams that were coming up i could never do that Uh, it's not a great idea i was really good at the all-nighters it was the staying then staying up for the exam the next day (laughs) that was really hard it's easy to stay up all night but then actually being able to actually think coherently during the exam that's kind of tough and here's the pro tip for all of you listeners who are still in school it actually is like scientifically proven better for you to 
sleep because your brain will actually retain the information. Yeah. So go to sleep. Oh, yeah. Stop listening to us. Go to sleep. Yeah, no, Wake matters. up for your finals tomorrow. You're going to be fine. I had a cool hallucination in final exam one time from pulling an all-nighter. Uh, that's a whole other I was going to say, yeah. we can talk about that later. Yeah. We'll talk about that at CrimeCon. Yeah. yeah. Um, Randy said in interviews after Brian disappeared that he remembered feeling like he didn't think Brian should go out with his friends as he had planned later that night because he seemed so tired. But he didn't say anything because, you know, Brian's an adult. Yeah, Which I think well, is fair. Totally. Yeah, sure. But you know, when you get out there to the bar, you know, the loud music and the booze is a big energizer for me. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it can be. It's, yeah, it's, it's an energizer at the beginning. Yeah. yeah, and you know, usually at that age, at that age, three years ago, you, <laughs> old lady, you. <laughs> you have some coffee or you know an energy drink or something like that sometimes to help mm. you out a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, probably was drinking Red Bulls or something. Yeah. So Brian goes out. Uh, the main friend that he's with is named William Florence, but this guy's nickname is Clint, so we're going to call him Clint. Brian met Clint at the Ugly Tuna Saloon. <laughs> nice name, huh? <laughs> I'm going to call it that, every, the full name, every single time. Yeah. Um, ugly owners. Yeah. They, I, I think beautiful fish. I think it's tuna-phobic. I don't think <laughs> we should use it. Um, well, they met at 9 p.m. that night and then started bar hopping down kind of a main drag street. Yeah, it's a college town, right? Yeah. So there's lots of bars. Clint says that at each bar, they took a shot, then moved on. At about 10 p.m., Alexa says Brian called her because she was visiting her family about a couple hours away before they... Toledo, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is like a two and a half hour drive from Columbus, where okay. they were. Uh, or like outside of where, wherever um, or Ohio State University is. I think actually in the beginning of this, I said it was University of Idaho or of Ohio. Wow, you are just putting <laughs> every state school in Bat the in a thousand yeah. here, man. It's good. Um, anyways, it was actually OSU. So okay. sorry for that yeah. earlier. Anyway, Alexa says that about 10 p.m. Brian called her because she, like we said, she was visiting her family. Mm -hmm. um, just just to say that he loved her and, you know, he was out and, you know, he would see her. It was like an off. hour into the night, I yeah. think, is where I've, I've seen it. So he must have started drinking around 9 o'clock. They were, yeah, uh, they do. They have that timestamp. Clint said they met at 9 p.m. Right. And they started bar hopping. And, you know, I suspect she was probably thinking, like, I'm going to go to bed soon. And he called her to say goodnight and he loved her and yeah, he was going to well, be out. And, and after, a, yeah. after a drink or two, you're, you're totally you like, get real hey, lovey. babe, love you. <laughs> yeah. well, he love was you probably so more much. Five, like, hey, man, he, he was, was probably, uh, <laughs> I'm figuring he probably had about 12 shots under his belt by this time. That was a whole hour. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't think 12 probably, but... <laughs> no, but uh, um, Oh, anyway, okay, ambitious, an unspecified time after midnight. I think it's close after midnight, but it is never actually specified. Clint and Brian run into one of Clint's friends named Meredith Reed, who then gave them a ride back to the Ugly Tuna Saloon. Meredith is a guy, correct? I believe... Because, I mean, Meredith is one of those names that can be ma a male or a female, and I, I'm pretty sure it was a guy and not a girl, but I... Oh, really? I, I never thought got, it was a girl. Yeah. Well, see, I, I initially, I was like, oh, it must be a lady, but then a bunch of stuff that I read gave me the impression that it was all the guys going to the last bar. Really? This is very odd. Here's what I'll tell you is I watched the crap out of the surveillance and tapes. And you can't tell. Well, and I can't... Well, the, the surveillance tapes are really good, but... But Brian is standing in front of Meredith, right, and so and walking, tell. and so you can't actually tell. So I how tall is Meredith? Do you think? Do you well, I don't know. That? that they are standing on the step below Brian, uh -huh. and Brian was six two. So I I don't know. Not taller than six two plus five inches. Uh -huh. okay. Um. So I not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. I believe it's a guy, but uh, again, that's. I'm not 100 percent positive because there's so much weird reporting on this one. Yeah, and that's the other thing is I've never seen it. I don't think I've ever seen it specified. I'm like racking my brain. Okay. Um. So I'm really sorry, everyone. I'm going to admit there's a lack in my research. Sorry, I'm uh, the brain spasm. Yeah, but I, I actually think it, it probably is a female type person just simply because I have a, I have an eye for this sort of thing. Like if if like say on the Wikipedia page. Meredith would have been referred to at some point as him or he or something like that. No. Yeah, and Meredith that would have was jarred never, over. It in never any is. way on the page. Never That's yeah. the problem. It's either, either Reed, uh -huh. as in the last name, or they, 
Whoa. as in the he and, or she, the, that person and, and Clint. It's, okay. it's always very gender non-specific yeah. is, right. is what's bungling all so of this. We're going we're gonna to make Meredith into a girl here, I think. I think we're just going to just call Meredith and Clint. We're going to yeah. let Meredith stay gender non-specific the yes. way Meredith likes it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Meredith gave them a ride back to the Ugly Tuna Saluna where they all planned to end their night, then go home. Brian reportedly got separated from Meredith and Clint at this spot. The bar closes at 2 a.m. Normal, yeah. uh, Which is normal. So Clint and Meredith figured they'd wait outside the only exit from the bar, and they'd find Brian in the crowd exiting. When they didn't see him, they assumed that when they'd been separated from the bar, Brian had just left without telling them, you know, he couldn't find them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, The next morning, 